So welcome everybody to this contemplative meeting of the Golden Rosy Cross on the topic from isolation to liberation. We suggest that you find a quiet place so that you can listen with an open heart and reflect deeply on the topic and on what we have discussed together today. This contemplative meeting reflects not only on what is happening in the world right now, but also on the inner connection we must find with the other one within us. We invite you to consider what you have heard today in these moments in the center of your being and experience the presence of the living body which we form together as we focus together on the inner essence, the inner other one, which is at the same time the one in every one of us. We will now listen to some reflective music, followed shortly by our contemplation. Thank you. Dear friends, we would like to contemplate some aspects of the isolation we feel from time to time, and that is now ever more a feature of our everyday life. In these times, it is important to find those aspects of our life that we can actually do something about. And these happen to be those things that, with the right inner knowledge, can actually move us in definitive steps towards a new spiritual realization. Of course, we do what is necessary in the physical sense to avoid exposing ourselves and others to harm. And in doing so, we soon find that the isolation we experience brings to the fore some deeply personal and also spiritual questions. Perhaps now more than ever, we yearn for togetherness, comfort and support. We may feel isolated, physically and spiritually, as if we were placed in a state of limbo or suspended animation. This feeling is understandable because when we are left with just ourselves and the inner reality of our personal relationships, being physically isolated can bring us to question whether we are also being spiritually isolated, or indeed whether it is the case that we already are, but 
have only just now realized it. However, could it be that in regards to physical and spiritual isolation, we find we are moving in opposite directions? Could it be that we have, sorry, that when we have physical connectedness with others in our everyday life, we neglect our inner needs and are spiritually isolated? Or is it only when we find ourselves physically isolated that we feel drawn to be reconnected spiritually? For many of us, these questions might arise from this new experience, but for humanity, this is a timeless dilemma. Before we consider these questions, let us reflect on these reassuring words from the Tao Te Ching, from the writings of the ancient Chinese philosopher, Lao Tzu. Without going outside, you may know the whole world. Without looking through the window, you may see the ways of heaven. The farther you go, the less you know. Thus, the sage knows without traveling. He sees without looking. He works without doing. We would all like a clear answer as to whether being physically isolated from others should bring about an experience of spiritual connectedness or not. Well, we can give two answers to this question. Yes and no. Yes, certainly, as we find our physical isolation has increased, it brings with it the opportunity for our spiritual isolation to decrease. And no, certainly not, because we find that the various human reactions to our physical isolation necessitate that we should also maintain a certain degree of spiritual isolation. To find our way out of this dilemma, let us consider the no answer first. What are the features of physical isolation that might also be worth isolating ourselves from spiritually? First of all, we must isolate ourselves from the fear, worry and anxiety around and within us. There are so many unknown factors in life that a certain degree of unease is a natural psychological, sorry, physiological reaction. But we should really try to avoid getting caught up in the fear and panic that can morph out of such uncertainties. We need to remember that most events and moments of our routine life are unknown to us before they happen. So whether we like to plan ahead or just live for the day, either way, we really have no idea what the next moment might bring. So these times are really no different on an individual basis. Therefore, it is important that we have clear insight regarding this reality and try to put this phenomenon of panic and irrational fear into perspective. Reflecting on our own actions and reactions and consciously reframing from feeding the monstrous astral forces that come with fear and panic can lead us to true spiritual insight into the origins, attributes and predicament generated by the limitations of our sensory perception and our natural instincts as human beings.
Secondly, we must isolate ourselves from subjectivity and from the pervasive deception, rumor and speculation that we create for ourselves or allow into ourselves through gossip, chats, social media, or the constant torrent of breaking news. We must observe objectively all these things so that we do not get caught up in them nor succumb to them. When we engage in a conscious effort to find stillness and observe objectively, we can separate out the chaos and subjectivity of these speculative forces from the actual facts of the matter. Then we will immediately be able to see the situation in a clear, rational and harmonious reality, rather than being dragged into a whirlpool of emotions and speculation. We again refer to the timeless advice in the Chao Te Ching, chapter 12. The five colors blind the eye, the five tones deafen the ear, the five flavors dull the taste. Frenzy rides and hunts, lead the human heart astray. Goods hard to come by and juice man to pernicious deeds. Hence, the sage is guided by his inner being and not by his eyes. He rejects everything coming from outside and longs for what is within. When we have thus isolated ourselves in such moments of stillness and objectivity, we are able to discern that there are two forces working within us and in and around those around us. One force that is tangible, volatile and dynamic, and another force that is intangible, invariable and static. One is discernible subjectively through our senses. The other cannot be perceived nor grasped, but can only be discerned objectively in the silence of our heart when we are still for a moment to observe it. In fact, we find that one is the voice of the ego. The other is the inner voice, which we will only hear when we are truly still and open to it. Therefore, thirdly, we must seek to isolate ourselves from the chaos and turmoil around us, to find an inner stillness and silence in which we may listen to that inner voice. Only then are we able to focus our attention with this inner essence the essence that has created in the space outside of our egocentric and exoteric existence in the world. Then we will realize that the basis of this connection is the element of the divine, the inner other one that resides within us. If we open ourselves to this source, it will guide us to a new understanding, a new state of consciousness, based on the firm ground of our objectivity, insight and self-knowledge. From the Tao Te Ching, 
Chapter 16. We receive this advice. Become totally empty. Quiet the restlessness of the mind. Only then will you witness everything unfolding from emptiness. See all the things flourish and dance in endless variation and once again merge back into perfect emptiness. Their true repose, their true nature, emerging, flourishing, dissolving back again. This is the eternal process of return. To know this process brings enlightenment. To miss this process brings disaster. Be still. Stillness reveals the secrets of eternity. Eternity embraces the all possible. The all possible leads to a vision of oneness. A vision of oneness brings about universal love. Universal love supports the great nature, sorry, the great truth of nature. The great truth of nature is Tao. Whoever knows this truth lives forever. The body may perish, deeds may be forgotten, but he who has Tao has all eternity. So what of the answer? Yes, physical isolation brings with it the opportunity to diminish our spiritual isolation. Well, this possibility depends on how we react to the previous question and whether we are successful in isolating ourselves spiritually from those three forces that rage around us. Firstly, the loneliness or aloneness of our isolation, we can come to realize that what we thought connected us to our exoteric spirituality was not the physical togetherness of the group, congregation or religion we belong to. Rather, it is our inner yearning, our inner state of longing that engenders the expression of our spiritual quest. Perhaps until now, we have never stopped long enough to actually recognize what it was that drove us to seek in these ways. And perhaps this is the first opportunity we have had to notice the existence of that inner voice that has always been present within us. Secondly, our physical isolation from any external guide or authority inadvertently brings with it the opportunity to turn inwardly to seek the guidance of our inner authority, the voice of the inner other one. So now that we recognize the existence of this inner longing for what it is, we can follow our yearning for spiritual freedom in unity with all who are seeking it. And when we do so, we recognize that we are all the same. We realize that the divine element that guides us, the force that connects us with the source, is one and the same in ourselves as it is in every other body. We realize that spiritually, we are all one. 
we are interconnected as one through the one divine essence that resides in each of us. Therefore, the, the primordial principle, the essence of all humanity is the one. With this inner recognition, we will unconditionally surrender all sense of egocentric self, of individualism, of superiority or inferiority, of separateness and of isolation. We surrender to the interconnectedness of everything. Then thirdly, this inner recognition of our interconnectedness leads us to a new perspective on life, a new attitude of life that interconnects not only the spiritual essence of every other human being, but of all life, every animal, every plant, every rock, every drop of water, and every breath of air. When we have undergone this fundamental reversal, this fundamental change to a new attitude of life, we undergo a transformation from an egocentric consciousness to the universal consciousness. Now we may clearly see that our physical isolation is an illusion. For we are connected not only in and through our physical proximity to our fellow human beings and every other thing. We are also connected directly through the etheric, astral and mental forces that extend between us all and to the pure spiritual body that permeates the universe. Now, through inner reflection, we can discover the four steps from spiritual isolation to spiritual unity through insight, yearning, self-surrender and a new attitude of life to our liberation in a new field of life, the universal consciousness. We have realized our self-transformation from isolation to liberation. Then any sense we might have had of spiritual isolation has disappeared and we are living in the world but are not beholden to the world. Then we are truly free. We would like to conclude this contemplation with a Gnostic prayer from the founders of the School of the Golden Rosy Cross. Are you conscious of having been called to freedom? Are you conscious of being drawn to the new life fields? If you are conscious of this, you are blessed among humankind then throw off all the impediments and enter the freedom which lovingly beckons you. The pastures of freedom and fulfillment are not a place to which you must travel incredibly far away. No, they are a state, a state of being. Because freedom calls you, because you seek freedom. Because time after time, freedom touches you. We may say that the new life is nearer than hands and feet.
It encompasses you and is within you. One positive farewell to your old state of being, to which you still cling too much. One positive decision to live the Gnostic magic life in accordance with the new state of being. And you will cross the bridge of many sighs to the joy of freedom, to proceed from freedom to fulfillment. We are now at the end of our gathering. And so we thank you for your attention and hope that the spiritual impulses that we have shared together today may stay in your heart and your mind in the coming days. Thank you once again to everyone who helped make today's event possible. If you wish to meet us again for future public events, please keep in contact with us via the School of the Golden Rosy Cross social media channels or visit the Golden Rosy Cross community website at www.goldenrosycross.org. For local events in Australia, please visit our website, goldenrosycross.org.au. Once again, thank you and we wish best wishes to you all.